Shalom. This is uh, Brother Azamawath. Once again, another lesson. First and foremost, we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Bakakodash. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father and His Son's name, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, real name in the Hebrews, Yahweh Shah. I want to say Shalom to all the sincere uh, Akiyama Akwath that's out there uh, giving your body as a living sacrifice on a daily basis. <clears throat> I also want to give double honors to my elders who taught me this truth. All right, so today, you know, we're um, back once again, you know, with more prophecy, right? With more prophecy on the way, you know. Um, as a matter of fact, let me grab this real quick in the book of Habakkuk before we get into this article. Because right now, what we see, you know, with, with Biden, you know, making his, um, his serpent move, you know, now since we know that this man is <clears throat> really... You know, speeding up his uh, speeding up his work. All right, we know that that the end is not. All right, we see that you know how he's now mandating all federal and city employees, you know, to get that 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 serpent poison right in, in their arm. All right, and <clears throat> we see how that's going to trickle down into a lot of other companies and businesses or whatnot. All right, we see a lot of the vi heavy division in planet Earth right now. Uh, we know that that heavy division is coming is coming from none other than Yahweh Shah, right? That's why he said in Luke chapter twelve. As a matter of fact, let me grab that. Let me grab that first in Luke twelve, All right? And the scriptures, the Bible has, it is, <laughs> it's always been life, but it has really been brought, right, to life in the correct understanding nowadays, with the uh, correct, well, with the sincere men bringing this thing to the forefront. Right, the true biblical Israelites, the so-called Black Hispanic and Native Americans. And then we have this refreshed word, right? Once we woke up to the truth, to the truth of our identity, and the Holy Spirit was placed inside of us. Right now, we're given sense of the Bible, and now it's just <laughs> making these words of this Bible leap, man. Right? They're literally leaping <laughs> almost off of the, off of the Bible, and you can see it happening right here in front of your face. All right? So let's grab this in Luke chapter twelve. <clears throat> Luke 12 and verse 51, he says, do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? He says, no, I have come to divide people against each other. All right. So this heavy division is coming from Yahweh Shah. Why? Because he's known as the word. And what is the known? What is the word also known as the sword? What does the sword do? It divides. All right. He makes everything uh separate from uh, one another he he's the one who discerns or uh, differentiates between holy and unholy just and unjust clean and unclean right and so that's what the lord is doing right now he's sifting the house of israel amongst all these nations like he said that he would in the prophecy in amos chapter 9 all right and we're gonna uh touch into you know briefly because i'm at work we're gonna touch into how these earthquakes man are playing a part right uh basically if you have spiritual eyes you can see that the lord is not only uh doing you know physically shaking things up right shaking the earth up but it's happening up on a, a spiritual level as well all right so let's let's go back to uh back chapter three we'll start at verse two we'll start at verse one he says a prayer of back the prophet upon uh shiganoth says oh yahweh I have heard thy speech and was afraid. And what's <coughs> who uh, who's the mouthpiece for Yahweh Yahusha? The prophets. Right? Habakkuk himself was a prophet and he saw uh, these visions that, that the Lord has given him. Alright, he saw the things that the Lord ha had um, has uh, uh, basically prepared for the inhabitants of the world. Right? And, and Habakkuk has heard the Lord's speech, heard these prophecies, and he was afraid. And he says, O Yahweh, revive thy work in the midst of the years. Right. And and the Lord, and, and for a lot of scoffers who say that the Lord doesn't, you know, do miracles anymore like he did in the old times. He doesn't, you know, split the uh split the seas in the middle like he did for Moses and, and he doesn't uh do this or that, you know, like some of the accounts that you were reading in the Bible. Well, guess what? Well, we're living in those days to where the Lord, he's now reviving his work. <laughs> he's reviving his work. And he says, uh, revive thy work in the midst of the years and in the midst of the years, 
right? So in these years, make known, right? And what is the Lord making known? Himself, himself, and more so, uh, and also his son. Also his son, as a matter of fact, let's grab that in the book of John 12. <clears throat> it's John 12 and uh, 28. It says, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it <coughs> and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. All right, and so the Lord in the midst of him uh, reviving these years, I mean, reviving his work in the midst of these years, what is he doing? He's glorifying his name once again because you got to remember Right when the Lord really uh, basically stamped that that seal or glorification upon His name, if you will, right? Um, you know, all His works has you know been giving Him glory and honor. But His Salaki, give me one moment. We're getting a call. Hold on. Hopefully, this isn't me. Fifty-five ever came up to respond. Medical emergency. Ten thirty-four Bryant Street. Fifty-five ever came up to respond. Medical emergency. One zero three four Bryant Street. Go for turnout. Fifteen thirty-six. All right, <clears throat> I think I'm next up, so let me uh, hurry up. So, uh, so yeah, as I was, as I was saying, right when the Lord <clears throat> really uh, glorified His name to in the sight of the heathens was during the time of the Exodus, All right? But He says right here in John 12, He says, uh, "I have both glorified it and will glorify it again." Now, how is He going to glorify it again during the time of the second Exodus, if you will, when when the remnant, right, when the one third and hundred forty four thousand of the nation of Israel will be exiting. Right, Babylon the Great. And that's how the Lord is going to get that glory in His name, man. Right, once again. Right, and it all starts with you uh, looking at the signs of the times. Right, so you can basically have a um, uh, what would you call it a uh, a gauge <clears throat> to see how close we are to that point, to that pivotal point in history, to where the Lord is about to glorify His name once again. Right, and all you got to do is just simply look at the signs. So let's go into this article real quick. Let me hurry up. It says update 8.2 quake, right? In Alaska was the largest earthquake to strike the US in 50 years. All right, so once again we see the Lord right shaking things up. He's doing mighty works, right? <clears throat> that uh that people have not seen in a while. And that's him reviving that work in the midst of these years. Right? And it says I'm just going to read a little bit. It says the monster 8.2 Alaska earthquake that struck in the early hours of Thursday morning was officially the largest quake since 1965 to strike the U.S. and caused a tsunami warning and local evacuations along the southwest gulf of Alaska coast late Wednesday, according to a new report from... Hold on. It says after tsunami waves of less than one foot arrive on shore the warning was canceled and coastal residents returned home so as we can clearly see man right 8.2 earthquake that's <laughs> that's a hell of a shake man you know most earthquakes that you you know hear about you know they hit mainstream news you know it's usually you know in the sevens you know mid to to uh low sevens you know like your 7.4 7.5s or you know your or your upper sixes all right, but at 8.2, 8.2, and this is the birth pains of, of the earth basically um, uh, being more frequent and also intensifying because uh, that's that's why Yahweh Shah likened uh, the times of the end or, uh, or the end of the world to be likened to uh, birth pains like a woman because when that baby's getting closer, not only do those contractions become uh, far more frequent in between, Right, but they also become more intense, right? And Earth is crying out, right? Earth is it, it's <laughs> it's hurting, man, right? It's hurting uh, for for a plethora of reasons, you know. Uh, one of the reasons, like Romans chapter eight, is because Earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God to be revealed, and that's the elect of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot to be revealed. And also, Earth is hurting because you got the wicked, which is the so-called white man, which is a nation of Edom ruling over it. You know, and um, and just perverting the perverting the planet Earth with its uh, wicked practices, right? But let's grab a few a few scriptures and we'll end it up. 
<coughs> this is uh, Second Ezra chapter nine verse one. He answered me then and said, "Measure thou the time." Copy on fifteen thirty-five. Hold on. Hey, come on, bro. Maria says, "Measure thou the time diligently in itself." All right, <coughs> and he said, "And how do you do that? You, you measure the times, right? In the um, in the uh, in the scope, well, in the um, confines of the scriptures, and these prophecies." He says, "And when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, then thou shalt understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made." All right, and you know the reason why we see all these uh. uh natural phenomena or so-called natural phenomena happening you know you see uh esau edom moving you know uh the way how he is people are just you know uh moving with a lot of hatred now it's because that's just part of the signs that's part of the, uh, the times of the, the uh the signs of the times right this is the lord visiting the world which he made all the hearts and minds of the sons of men are being made manifest right as yahweh shah draws closer into planet earth all right, he's putting a, magni uh, a magnifying scope, magnifying lens on everyone, if you will. All right, it says, verse 3, Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes, see that? When there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, is that not what we're seeing? All right, you got riots, and, uh, riots taking place, you know, in, in various parts of the world. <coughs> Colombia, you know, uh, Venezuela. Uh, where else? Russia, uh, France, uh, uh, Italy, man, everywhere. You know, parts of the United States, uproars of the people, and, and synonymous, synonymously, what do you see, right? Along with that, earthquakes. All right, so this is part of the signs of the times, man. This is none other than Yahweh Shah visiting the world that he made. He says, "Then thou shalt well understand." I mean, <laughs> if you got good sense, you're gonna understand. Right, but a lot of our people don't have understanding. Right? That's why he said in Proverbs chapter 4 and 7, he says, with all that getting, getting understanding. Because most people will not understand, even though they see all this stuff happening, right? They still don't understand what's going on. Alright. <laughs> people are, you know, lost in the sauce. That day is going to come upon them unawares, like a thief in the night, because they don't have any understanding. He says, Then thou shalt well understand that the most high spake of those things, right? And how did he speak of those things? By the mouth of his prophets. From the days that were before thee, right, even from the beginning. Because like Isaiah 46, uh, verse uh, 10 says, he says that from the ancient of the days, he has declared the end. All right. Uh, so um, let's grab this real quick. <clears throat> Book of uh, Isaiah 29, 5. I really wanted to uh, kind of go a little more, but it looks like we're about to start getting busy at work. So let me hurry up. Isaiah 29, and uh, let me start at verse 6. He says, Thou shalt be visited of Yahweh a host, meaning the Lord of heaven's armies, with thunder and with earthquake. All right, so with all these earthquakes that we're seeing, it's just Yahweh Shah visiting the planet Earth that he made. All right, he says, And great noise, and that great noise is... Um, comes from a plethora of things noise of the peoples noise of the planet earth all right he says with storm and with tempest <coughs> and the flame of devouring fire and we see you know that <laughs> pretty much the whole down west you know of babylon is on fire right now man all right so let's grab this in our uh, hebrews <coughs> let's go to hebrews chapter 12 we we'll start at verse 26, and it says, When Yahweh spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. All right, so when Yahweh, you know, spoke, you know, when he gave uh, Moses, you know, those lively uh, oracles, those commandments, <clears throat> you know, and the uh, the heritage that our, uh, our ancestors was, you know, supposed to have been walking in, right? He shook the earth. And it, was a, it was a great earthquake then. All right, he says, but now he makes another promise. Once again, this is in quotations, it says, once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. What does that mean? He's going to shake not just the earth only, but the heavens also. Let's grab this in Second Peter. Those heavens deal with, 
right? <coughs> it's a locket, man. I'm getting over this cold. It's not the Delta. It's just a cold, you know. But in 2021, people will say it's the Delta. But Esau, his damn propaganda. But the Lord, you know, is giving us, you know, medicines from the earth. You know, I've been taking some elderberry and, you know, been, uh, drinking some uh, <clears throat> some ginger tea and whatnot, and it's been helping. You know, and of course, prayer, you know, is uh, it's going to help. Prayer is, is the most important thing. So it says, Second uh, Peter chapter three, verse. Uh, let's start at verse seven. He says, "But the heavens and the earth, which are now right in the heavens, is the uh, you go into that word heaven in the Hebrew. It means uh, uh, Shemayim, right? In Shemayim, uh, you have three heavens according to the according to the Bible. You have the firmament, right? That's considered the heavens, and then you have space outside of the firmament, right? You know, which some people know as outer space." You know, that's known as the heavens and also, um, you know, where the Lord reside. That's the heaven of heavens. And also on a, uh, on a more, well, also, you know, a, a place of rulership, right? That's heavens because that's a high place that someone is dwelling. Like when you read Isaiah chapter 14, Lamentation chapter 2, it talks about how uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, oh, also, um, I want to say Obadiah. Yeah, Obadiah talks about how uh, Edom. Right, how they're in the heavens just basically meaning that they're in, um, they're a high place for rulership, right? So when it says that the heavens, but the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word are kept in store, right? Meaning that they're reserved, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Yeah, so Esau and his rulership is reserved unto fire by ICBM missile fire, and the actual heaven, the actual atmosphere. Right, it will have fire in it, by the way of you know the holy cherries and also the ICBM missiles, right, shooting back and forth, right in the firmament. But this is uh, touching on Hebrews, right. This is uh, it says once again, I will shake not only the earth but the heavens also. So the Lord is shaking Esau Edom out of his place of rulership. All right, so these earthquakes <clears throat> should basically be a sign of the, should show you the signs of the times that Esau. The so-called white man is about to be removed out of his place of rulership. So this is Isaiah 49. I'll start at verse uh, 20. He says, listen to the Lord's plans against Edom. See that? Against Edom. And the people of Teman. And Teman is just a duke of Edom. And it says, even the little children will be dragged off like sheep. And their homes will be destroyed. The earth will shake. See that? That's an earthquake. The earth will shake. <clears throat> with the noise of Edom's fall and its cry of despair will be heard all the way to the Red Sea. So us looking at these earthquakes that's going on should just be a, a, a an encouraging reminder for you brothers and sisters, you know, that this is Esau Edom being shaken or about to be shaken out of his uh, rule and reign of terror. So let's go back to Hebrews 12 and we'll finish it out right here. Hebrews 12, and it says, When Yahweh spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth, but now he makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heaven also, the heavens also. And you see, once again, how the, the, how the heavens is plural, letting you know that there's more than one heaven. All right, and one of these heavens that's going to be shaken, all right, is Esau Edom, his, 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 uh, his throne, his power seat, if you will. He says, this means that all of creation will be shaken and removed. Let's read that again, verse 27. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed. <clears throat> and that's what the Lord is doing right now. He's sifting. He's sifting. He's putting everyone in their proper lots right now. He's shaking things up, right? <clears throat> Literally and spiritually. He says, so that only unshakable things will remain and those unshakable things will be none other than the elect and that's what you get the word um uh, remnant from it comes from the word remainder right and remainder basically means that which is left over left over from what left over from the shaking and the tottering right and the reeling to and fro right so 
So yeah, that's um, like I said I was gonna go into a little bit more, but we're about to start getting busy here at work at the plantation. But um, but yeah, I hope you was edified with that. DTA a Baba Ball. Till next time, Shalom.